Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks, why do beautiful people earn more money? So another related question here would be, is there such a thing as an ugliness penalty or a beauty premium? So an ugliness penalty would be where people who are less attractive would earn less money, and a beauty premium, of course, would be where people were more attractive and they earned more money. So we see a lot of evidence that supports the idea that beautiful people earn more money. For example, NBA graduates who are attractive make more money than less attractive NBA graduates. We see that more physically attractive lawyers make more money than physically unattractive lawyers. There seems to be little doubt that Physical attractiveness is a tremendous advantage across multiple domains, including earnings. The question really becomes, why? We know it's true, at least it appears to be true, but why does it happen? So according to a 2017 study, there are three main theories as to why this occurs. Discrimination, self-selection, and individual differences. This study tested to see which of these, if any, explain the relationship between beauty and earnings. So let's take a look at these three potential explanations. Starting with discrimination, we see this one is fairly straightforward. This theory essentially says that everybody chooses physically attractive people over physically unattractive people. Employers choose them, customers choose them, colleagues choose them, friends, everybody. So in a sense, employers directly discriminate because of this bias, but they also may be responding to their customers' bias. If customers prefer people who are more physically attractive, it makes sense that employers would hire people who are more attractive. So for this theory to be supported, attractiveness and earnings should have a positive association that is monotonic. So what this means is we should see an increase as we move through the levels of measurement. Right, so put another way, an unattractive person should earn more money than a very unattractive person. A person of average attractiveness should earn more than someone who is unattractive, and so on. So again, as we move up the levels, we should always see an increase. So now moving to self-selection. This theory says that it's possible that physically attractive people tend to choose occupations that have higher average earnings and or unattractive people tend to select jobs where the earning potential is lower. So what this would mean is that within an occupation, physical attractiveness should not be an advantage. Within one occupation, it shouldn't matter. So just looking at retail workers or looking at engineers or accounts, just looking at the one profession, again, within that one profession, we shouldn't see a difference. Across occupations, so between occupations is where we would expect to see an effect if this theory were true. And the only advantage was actually gained by a person's choice. No one else is causing a person to earn more or less regardless of their attractiveness. Then we have the last theory. This is the theory of individual differences. What this says is that physical attractiveness may be related to other variables, and those other variables in part an advantage to the physically attractive person. For example, physical attractiveness is positively correlated with adult health. It has a weak positive correlation to intelligence, and both health and intelligence are associated with higher earnings. Now, making this a little bit more complex, it could also be that physically attractive people develop certain personality characteristics that give them an advantage, like high extroversion because they were treated more favorably when they were younger, that might help them to develop extroversion, and then extroversion might convert into higher earnings later on. So with this theory, if a statistical relationship between physical attractiveness and earnings was explored, with the inclusion of the other variables that would be controlled, like health, intelligence, and personality, the positive correlation between attractiveness and earnings would disappear. And I'll explain what it means to control a variable as I move on to the next part, which is the results. So let's take a look at the results when all these theories were tested. Again, discrimination, self-selection, and individual differences. 
Now, this study looked at physical attractiveness in five categories. Very unattractive, unattractive, about average, attractive, and very attractive. This is called a Likert scale, positioning the options like this, right? This is very common in this type of research. I mentioned before that for the discrimination theory to make sense, the relationship between physical attractiveness and earnings has to be monotonic. So every level of physical attractiveness needs to be associated with more earnings as we move up the scale from very unattractive to very attractive. Well, as it turns out, we don't see this monotonic relationship. It's not true. Very unattractive people actually earned more than those who were about average. They also earned more than people who were just regular unattractive, right? So participants who were average earned more than unattractive, though, right? So we still saw that was kind of in the order that was expected. Average earned more than unattractive. It was really this very unattractive piece that was unexpected. So this seems to run against the ugliness penalty. We actually seem to see an ugliness premium. And it doesn't completely rule out the beauty premium because the very attractive and attractive people earned more than the average looking participants and more than the two levels of unattractiveness. In terms of self-selection, the next theory, this is when attractive people choose higher earning occupations. No evidence to support this was found. Physically attractive people don't appear to choose occupations that tend to have higher average earnings. So that leaves us with individual differences. Do other variables that are associated with physical attractiveness actually explain the earnings? So to test this, we see there's a regression model. And this controls for a number of these other variables, including intelligence, health, and big five personality factors, as well as a few other factors. So what do I mean by the term control? What does it mean to control for a variable? So I'm going to illustrate this using an example kind of unrelated to this particular study. So if you had a method for teaching statistics that you believed helped students perform better on a statistics test, right? So you had a special method of presenting, maybe dialogue, exercises, whatever it was. You had some sort of special method and you thought it would have an effect in this area. So as you attempt to study this, you know that intelligence, which we typically measure with IQ, would really explain a lot of the variance in terms of how well people did on the statistics test. So without any training, the individuals with the higher IQ would probably do better on the test. So IQ becomes a variable that you want to control. You want to be able to analyze the effect of your intervention as if IQ was the same for all the students. So this is called controlling for IQ or holding IQ constant. And that's what was done in this study, except that we see more than just one variable. They controlled for several variables. So after controlling for these factors, so holding them constant, there is no evidence of an ugliness penalty or a beauty premium, but there was again some evidence for an ugliness premium right? So very unattractive participants earned more than unattractive participants. So do these other variables predict higher earnings, like intelligence and health? Well, as it turns out, they do. We see that earnings are statistically significantly positively correlated with intelligence, health, extroversion, and statistically significantly negatively correlated with openness to experience and neuroticism. So as intelligence, health, and extroversion increase, earnings increase. And as openness to experience and neuroticism increase, earnings decrease. Now, most of these findings aren't surprising, except for the openness to experience, as this trait is positively correlated with intelligence. So as openness to experience increases, we would expect intelligence to increase. So this finding really doesn't make sense. Typically, people who are high in openness to experience would be expected to have higher earnings. Physical attractiveness is, of course, positively correlated with intelligence, health, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, and agreeableness, and negatively correlated with neuroticism. So when looking at all these theories, discrimination, self-selection, and individual differences, it appears that only the individual differences theory 
makes any sense, right? It seems to make the most sense of all these. It is the factors that physical attractiveness is related to that seem to actually cause the higher earnings, not beauty itself. So what about the ugliness premium? Why did very unattractive participants earn so much money? Well, it turns out they were more intelligent and had a higher level of education, but we don't know why. That's a bit of a mystery. This was an interesting study. I think it was a good attempt to figure out the answer to this question about beauty and earnings. So what are my thoughts on this study and its results? Well, I think the main conclusion of the study makes sense. Beautiful people make more money, not because of discrimination and not because they select higher paying occupations, but rather beauty is associated with characteristics that lead to more earnings. So in a sense, there is no beauty premium and there is no ugliness penalty. Instead, we see that there is an intelligence premium and a low intelligence penalty, and the same can be said for health and extroversion. Nowhere in the study do we see any evidence that supports the idea of a beauty penalty. That's never even mentioned. Now, this is noteworthy because some people believe that if somebody's physically attractive, that somehow works against that person. We see no evidence really anywhere that I've ever seen that supports this theory. So one of the most interesting findings, of course, was this ugliness premium, this kind of odd finding we found with the very unattractive people's earnings. So a few things here. It's worth noting that the very unattractive people did not earn as much as the attractive or very attractive people. So the effect of this ugliness premium has a clear limit. Another important aspect here to keep in mind is when looking at the statistical data, we see that participants rated as very unattractive made up only about 2% of the sample. Now, we wouldn't expect this distribution to be uniform, right? We wouldn't expect there to be 20% in each category. Rather, we would expect a normal distribution. So a lot of people in the about average category, a fair number in the unattractive and attractive categories, and a few in very unattractive and very attractive. So if there was a normal distribution, if that were the case, we would expect the very unattractive category to have about the same number of people as the very attractive category. Yet depending on the sample you're looking at in the study, very attractive people outnumbered very unattractive people about four to one. As a matter of fact, for every sample, if you add together all the very unattractive people and all the unattractive people, there's still not as many of those as the individuals in the very attractive category. And the about average category had just a few more people in it in many of the samples as the attractive category did. So if we think of this like a distribution, like plotted on a chart, this would be a negatively skewed distribution because the tail of the distribution extends to the left. So I think what could have happened here is that people were reluctant to rate other people as being very unattractive, which actually makes a lot of sense. It's considered unkind to think of somebody or to indicate that somebody's very unattractive, even on a survey when you know your scores are anonymous. Nobody wants to have to say that somebody is very unattractive, or at least most people don't want to say that. Instead, they might put that person in the unattractive category or even the average category. Also, the inter-rater reliability for the very unattractive category was the lowest of all of the attractiveness categories. So this means that multiple raters did not agree about what very unattractive was. So some of this probably comes down to a measurement problem. So is there any useful information from a study like this? How can this be applied to real life? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but I have a few theories here of how this could be useful. I guess one takeaway could be that employers are likely looking for intelligent, healthy, and extroverted employees. Now, nobody can really stop employers from looking for intelligent employees, but discriminating based on health and personality is a real problem. In most places, that would be illegal. And I think it's becoming an even greater problem as more employers are trying to give applicants personality tests. We see this behavior is increasing. And this is, of course, a practice that should be banned altogether. Another takeaway here, I guess it's better to be very unattractive than unattractive, at least in terms of earnings. So if somebody's unattractive, maybe they want to appear 
to be even less attractive. I don't think that's really a helpful way to look at it because, again, it was the intelligence and the higher level of education that actually explained the earnings, right? So that was the connection to the very unattractive people. So I'm not really sure there's anything to be learned around that. Moving to the last possible takeaway, if somebody is unattractive or very unattractive, it would seem that people don't want to tell that person what they really think of their attractiveness. So perhaps it's hard for a person like that to get an honest opinion about how they look. And among other consequences, this is going to limit the accuracy of research on this topic. So I know whenever I talk about topics like attractiveness and earnings, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate early interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.